guys, welcome to the Train Parrot. I'm not gonna lie, the four hour time frame is looking extremely ambiguous. In today's video, we're gonna look into what needs to happen in the price action for that lack of clarity in direction to start giving us some strong hints of what is next for Bitcoin. Make no mistake, the whales currently strongly accumulating. I'm gonna show you precisely what they're doing. So it's no longer a secret for anybody. We're gonna look into the levels of liquidations that could potentially attract the price for Bitcoin in the upcoming days. And of course, we're gonna cover the CME gaps for this weekend. So make sure that you don't miss anything. Guys, if you like this type of content, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I put out one of these videos. And if you feel like supporting the channel, watch this video until the very end and do not go anywhere without leaving a comment down below. Those two things are sending a strong message to the YouTube algorithm that this content is worth watching by more people. So thanks so much for that. And yet CME closed this weekend at the price of 59.6. So this means just one thing. Wherever the price goes from 59.6, there is a strong magnet that is going to bring back the price into that 59.6 at some point in the future. Sometimes it's right on Monday that it comes back, sometimes a week after, sometimes three weeks after. But in my opinion, that's a good thing because it's almost touching the 60K. So if we were this weekend to make a very bearish move like we did in the past weekend, when we went to 49K, something was constantly telling me in my ear, we left a huge gap in here and there's a high chance we're gonna go back and closer. And you can see that by the dollar on this week, right there at 62.9, in a way that acted like an insurance. And it's impressive to think that this was a full move of 27% to close the gap. And this counts in both directions. So if during the weekend we saw a rally into 65K, I will be strongly concerned because that means that we need to go slightly below 60K once again, reverting the whole move. So in my opinion, during the weekend, just a matter of preference, I will prefer that the price goes sideways or slightly gets into the 55K. This will mean that we can easily take a long from 55K. Of course, not just using the CME gap by its own, but if we find confluence with other arguments, maybe a breakout of the RSI, maybe some interesting liquidation levels at this top, we could take that trade for the rest of the week. In terms of the daily, since the crash from 70K to 49, we have made a bounce printing this high at 62.7 and then a low 56.3. What's next for the price on the daily time frame is to break this high, to maintain the bullish structure on the daily time frame. We need to get anywhere above 61. 0.5. Ideally, if we got closer to the 65K, that will clear all the doubts that this is a bullish structure and that we are going to continue going higher, aiming for the plan B, the yellow path in this chart. Breaking out above the megaphone will be the typical and most cliche thing that we do around this stage of the market right past the halving event. Past performance doesn't guarantee future performance, but we are keeping all eyes into this price action at the moment in case it decided just to do exactly the same that it has been doing in the past. When it comes to the four hour, it's just a mess. It's very difficult to understand trend from this. Of course, there was a crash and you could argue that we are just doing a dead cat bounce into here for potential new load, aiming for that 46, 47, that will be the next leg down if we were to materialize the full target of this dead cat bounce. An ABC correction, call it however you like. We even wasted so much time looking at this head and shoulders in here, getting the breakdown, following every single rule, even touching the fair value gap, just to barely dump six to 7% and then go back in here and revisit the same level. And the truth is that the four hour is full of ambiguity right now. It broke down, it didn't really respect the full target. And now it's kind of printing an inverse head and shoulders in here with a neck at 59.7 and a full target to 63, 
0.4K. Of course, that is if we break above this neckline. If we see another rejection at 59.6 in here, and we take this low that we just print, then we start putting on the table again that we could fulfill the 100% target of the head and shoulders and the ABC correction. On the four hour, I'm not even gonna look at what the RSI is currently doing because it's just a mess. There was cleanness on this move down. There was also a very clean direction on the move up. But since then, we have been seeing downwards momentum on the four hour, but actually the price is not going anywhere. If you look at this price, 59.6, the same price we were on the 8th of August. That is 10 days ago and nothing has really happened. So let's leave aside for a bit the technical analysis on the price action in RSI. Let's look at what the big boys are currently doing. Because behind the curtains, the Big Well Explorer is showing us that currently withdrawals are outpacing the deposits. And this is a good sign. We have taken two out of three big steps. We broke down below the trend line. We broke down below the MA. And the last step is to get into a ratio of one or below one. Those levels of high withdrawals from exchanges coming from wells, large wallets, mean nothing else but strong accumulation from rich people. And if we pair this together with the long and short term holders current approach, you can see that we are about to see the long term holders get to levels higher than in January. And with the price going down and this massive divergence of what the long term holders are doing, which they tend to get it right a lot better than the short term holders. With the price going down and the short term holders capitulating, this is putting a big smile in my face. So when it comes to the swing trade, this week has been really ambiguous, really difficult to catch a high quality setup. Luckily, I haven't taken any trade because I was sick pretty much the full week, finding it really difficult to concentrate. When you feel not 100%, the last thing that you should be doing is swing trading. It takes 100% of your concentration to not mess up your account. And actually, the only trade that took last week was on the low of 56.4, and I closed very quickly at 58.5. I shouldn't have. I was just trading the liquidation level at that point. But apart from that, it was a very boring week for me. What I'm really doing these days is concentrating on what the big boys are doing right now and I'm following precisely their steps with a clear expectation of what could happen if the price continues going down. And I'm pretty sure that they're going to accumulate even stronger, at least in the past performance. That's what they do during this period towards the end of the summer. One of the things I'm really liking at the moment is this price action. Finding support at 55, then breaking below to 49, then coming back down and finding once again support there. This creates a very nice price action that now we can prove that we have a reversal, right? We have a low here. All we need now next is to put a high at 65, and then we are going to be confirming that things can change. And let's look a little bit at the MACD as well. At the top of the price at 73.5, we have a bearish cross. This bearish cross produced a bullish cross right there. And that took the price higher at the top once again. And we get a bullish cross right here. And we have another decent rally that takes us 22%. And what is going on today? Right now, we are about to have a bullish cross on the MACD once again. So far, we have had two bullish crosses Process. One gave 17%, one gave 20 something percent. If we have a rally of 20% around that, we could be getting very close to a new all time high. So, this MACD cross is pretty interesting as well. If you just focus on the MAs, we are doing a bullish divergence as well. We got lower lows in here and we got higher lows on the MAs. Sure, on the histogram is quite the opposite, you can argue, but for now, I'm going to take the positiveness of this and I'm going to pair it as well with the DXY. DXY, the dollar index, we need it to do a breakdown from this structure that we have right here on the weekly time frame. A breakdown from this support is very similar 
to what we finally did in May 2020. At this point, the DXY collapsed over 10% when we saw a rally of Bitcoin of 800%. So don't take this as a joke. If we were to break down on the DXY and able to maintain a downtrend that goes below 100, that is going to be extremely bullish. And I'm going to give you some good news because on the other side of the DXY, we have already broken down. This is one point towards confirmation that we could be seeing in the upcoming two to three weeks, a breakdown of the dollar index. Very recently, we have a buy from the hash ribbons. This indicator very rarely has been wrong and it's already in a massive drawdown, almost like never seen before. Whenever we see a drawdown like this, right after a buy signal of the hash ribbons, price tends to recover and put a new high right above when the signal triggered the buy. That can take some time, but in the past performance, it has never failed. We are getting close to another weekly close. Tomorrow on Sunday, if price remains around this area, this is looking like a second confirmation that this is a pivot with a higher low. Confirming that is a good indication that we are going to be aiming very soon for a breakout of the weekly RSI. And yes, we have a bearish crossover in here, but it could happen that we get another bullish cross right after. You can see, for example, on the FTX collapse, we had a bearish cross right there just to get a bullish straight away immediately catching everybody off guard. And one more thing that is quite bullish at the moment is if you observe this whole period since October of 2023, it's almost 10 months that we haven't seen these levels so low of funding rates. And these are actually starting to occur during this price action that we were reviewing on the daily. Right in this four hour time frame is where people are going nuts with the shorts. They're opening so many shorts that they are getting the funding rates into the extreme negative values. Funding rates so negative, as long as we are not entering a bear market, tend to be the sweet spot to enter with longs. It means that the amount of shorts is disproportionate relative to the current trend where you are. And that typically happens very close to bottoms. You can also see here in Bitcoin Magazine Pro, we have negative funding rates overall across all exchanges when we went to 49k. That meant an immediate reversal. We also have them here pretty much in every bottom. There is negative funding rates in the bull market. Let's go into the liquidity. I'm looking at the scalping profile on trading different, and you can see that from 60 to 8, to 63K, there's huge amount of liquidation levels. To the downside, we don't have anything as significant with the exception of 54K. You can tell that the price only needs to move 3.5K to get that big area of liquidation taken. Recently during the week, when we were at 60K, we were talking about this being very close, but actually 57K was way closer with just 2K. And even being a smaller chunk of liquidation relative to this one, the price still decided to go and take first the 57. But now that the 57 is out of the way, the price is creeping into and once again getting into the 60K. My gut feeling tells me that the next thing is to take this level in here. And I'm hoping that we don't do this during this weekend. And by Monday, we are still here. We have a fair value gap at around 59.5K, meaning that we have to come back to fill that gap. What I would like is that the price remains in this area without being able to take this liquidation level. Later, next week, it will be amazing. We go for that. And then once we have taken care of this liquidation level, then we can start thinking about the 67. As long as we don't leave pending tasks like an open CME gap over the weekend. We don't want to do that. On fair value gaps, the closer one we have will take us to 60.5K. Then once we get rid of that one, the two closer fair value gaps that we have next is this one at the top at 63.6, which coincides with the liquidation level that we have at the top. And then this one that also coincides with the 54K that we have below the price. Now the 63 is a larger liquidation pool 
than the one we have down here. In fact, it will be awesome if the price took 54 over the weekend and we close on Sunday there because then we have the insurance from the CME gap at 59, which could help us recover to this level. So then we can assess the possibility of going to higher liquidation levels at 63, 67, and then further continuation to 70 and over, where is the big, big price for a short squeeze into all time highs. Guys, and before I let you go, I'm going to give you an alpha that you should thank me forever. This is the Bitcoin versus VIX, the volatility index on the S&P. We are doing a ratio between the two. And one of the things that has been the best for forecasting upside for Bitcoin, when you get a breakout of Bitcoin over the VIX. For example, the 1st of June of 2020, the breakout confirmed the beginning of the bull market. Then we entered the bull market in here and we started putting lows on the RSI applied to that ratio. Once we broke out on the 31st of October of 2022, that was once again the bottom. And since then, we've been putting higher highs, the ratio once again. During the crash, remember that the VIX made it to 65 and Bitcoin went to 49, causing it to get to a ratio of 800, which is almost the same ratio where we started this bull market. So this capitulation, when it comes to the ratio, was almost like going to the beginning of the full bull market. And that means that for this approach of looking at the price, when we couple these two different assets, we have done a full reset. And from this, we have had a very explosive move back into the 50% of the whole range. And we are right there at resistance on the other side. If this pattern was to break out this or the upcoming next weeks, I'm seriously saying that there could be a massive explosion to the upside. This explosion, if it plays out in the later years, we're going to be comparing it with this one that happened in here. We're going to be comparing it with this one that happened at this bottom of the bull market and the previous one, because it happens constantly with the rest of the ratios that I've been reviewing in previous videos against the liabilities of the Federal Reserve, against the Nasdaq and against the DXY, they are all about to break out as well. They are not quite ready like this one or this one or this one compared to the one against the VIX. I really have quite a high expectation for if in the upcoming weeks we see an actual breakout. Guys, I'm currently hosting a position airdrop on Bybit. You trade with $100 and they give you 500 additional to trade for free using the coins that appear on the screen. In order to take advantage of this, have a look at the top link in this video description. You need to click on it to activate it and follow the instructions. There's also a link in the description to open a new account on Bybit. If you do it with my referral link, you can unlock up to 30,000 in rewards. Once you get your shiny new account on Bybit, come to my Discord server and claim 70% of any Trading Parrot subscription. If you already have a Bybit account from before, you can transfer it to my referral with the instructions I left you on Discord. And have a look at this video in here on how to use a digital residence card to trade on Bybit from pretty much anywhere in the world. During the week, in one of the videos, I mentioned a new setup with absolute no using Rune in ADV plugins. Make sure that if you are visiting my Discord server, you pay a visit to the strategies. You can have a look at this one in particular. You can look at the backtesting results, the performance of the three commas DCA bot connected with the alerts. You can browse throughout all the different strategies in here. This information is open to anyone joining my Discord server. If you're not a member, make sure you take advantage of all the free stuff I left as well. See you on the next one. Bye bye.